Awo Shalom again. This is Wendem Yadon, and this is the part two to the 20th Torah portion. Te Awe is a Zacho. Command them, or command. This is the Torah portion, the 20th Torah portion. And it is the uh, eighth. Is it the, is it the eighth? It's the eighth in the book of Exodus. And this is the part two. And we're going to continue with where we were reading. We're speaking about the the menorah, which is the lampstand. And I know you'll see right here it says um, candlestick. And we mentioned that's what they call anachron, that's anachronistic. In other words, that's out of that's out of its proper time. In other words, in the early time, there was no such, it wasn't candles that they burned. And the type of first candlesticks that were burned, the type of wax that was used was certain animals, even pork fat and other kind of fat. So that's an error. It's an error. We hope to update this. It's an error when it says golden candlestick. It should say golden lampstand. Now, the golden lampstand, which is the first element um, being spoken of in Exodus 27 and 20, it's at this particular position, if if you can see it. Let's, let's zoom in on this. Um, let's zoom one more step. Okay. Okay, maybe one more step. All right. You can see this a little bit better. That's the position. See in the in the tabernacle. In other words, as you walk in the tabernacle, it is on the left, and the showbread is at the right hand. So the light. So you have the light and the bread. Now, the focus of this, of of the the first words of this portion, the focus of the first words of this portion. If we go over it again, let's bring up the other program and. Yes, brothers and sisters who had asked about this word program right here, we'll seek to we're working on it right now. You know, there's the harvest is ready, labors a few. There's a few of us, you know, who are in the bureaucracy of His Majesty. That means working in, in the in the office and discipline and together in this sort of sense. And we hope that others would, because we have the technology and we have to maximize, you know. The media use this so-called Babylonian technology against itself for the sake of our Father, His Christ, and our inheritance in the kingdom of the King of Kings and His Christ. But here's the word that it begins off with, And thou shalt command the children of Israel to bring the pure olive, pure oil olive, beaten for the light, to cause the lamp to burn Always. Mm hmm. And the word command, te sawe, or as we demonstrated over here in a in a larger in a larger type right here, so you can see this, so you can see this a little bit better right here. Let's go about one fifty, and bring the page, bring the page a little tighter in. You can see it right there. And this is this is the the te or t. Some would say ta, wa, or we, we, e, he. Te. They'll say te ta ve, te ta ve. We say te ta we, te ta we, te ta we, te ta we, which means command. You male command. Bamarinya is a zacho, is a zacho, command them. So what's the importance of, why does Yah focus such importance on the oil and, and this pure oil olive beaten, pure oil olive beaten, pure oil. First of all, what is oil? What's, what does oil mean? in the sense of having the veil taken off of our eyes in the reading of Moses. That means we must read it we must must read it with the testimony of Christ. 
So as we studied the Torah, it's not like it's not like the foolish Jews have done. You understand? But it's like Christ has taught us. You understand? As the Moshia, our Black Lord and Savior, Joshua. So oil. And take notes, my brothers and sisters, oil is a symbol of the manifest Kedus, the Kedus, or the, the, the Ruach HaKodesh in the Hebrew, or the manifest Kedus, the Holy Spirit. Um, compare with John 3 and 34, and with Hebrews 1 and 9. Those two verses, very good to compare to get that idea of oil, the Zayit, the Zayit, as which is the Bamarinya, the Zayit is oil, is a symbol. It's a symbol of what? A Holy Spirit. So now you got to meditate that. You know, meditate upon that. Oil is a symbol of Holy Spirit. Then see these verses compare John three and thirty four with Hebrews one and nine. Now in Moshiach or Mashiach in Christos, the oil-fed light in the anointed, the oil-fed light ever burns. The light of the world, the Medane, the Medhane Alem, John 8 and 12. Now, what's interesting when we say Christ, Christos, one who has been anointed, or Mashiach, one who has been Masha, or which means to anoint, he's anointed with what? With oil. So now understand now the the metaphysical connection now with oil. Once you understand the biblical types according to Jah word, you understand it's, it's like the code in the computer. You understand the better the information you put in your mind, you understand the better you'll be able to see these things in real time and, and, and to walk in them. But here, we have not the world. We don't have the world. We're not talking about the world. We're not talking about what goes on in, in, in these um, illegal Jehovah worships, so-called churches, placebo Christianity, counterfeit Christianity. No, we're not talking about that. We're not talking about what some so-called Jews here and there may do. No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the King of Kings, Kadamawi, Haile Selassie, and his Christ, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos. This is what we're speaking of, and we're speaking of the Mekdes, not the Alem, not the Seclorum, but the Sanctuary, not the Alem, but the Mekdes. So it is a question not of testimony in and to the world. We're not testifying to the world, oh, why you have to have a tabernacle, or why you have to do it. Like We're not testifying to the world. You understand? Know it's our communion this is our communion. This this is the space and, and, and the type of space that John says, make this sort of space and I will dwell there with you. I will dwell among you. You understand? But people, when you see what they be doing, like you see how a lot of these churches be laid out. You understand? Laid out as far as their, their um, design and um, ground plans or whatnot. You know, and then how they get laid out, too, by Satan. Satan knocks them out. You understand? Scatters the sheet. You understand? Because they're being disobedient. You know, when Moses was told to, to, to make this strictly, when you're going to call it, if you want to get together and read Bibles, you could do that anywhere. Really, you can. In your closet, outside, you could do that anywhere. You understand? But if you want to call something, this is a sanctuary much less in the formal sense church, you must keep the pattern, you know, and understand, overstand the pattern of the tabernacle. We're going to explain that, y'all willing, a little bit more. So it's not a question of, 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 of testimony in and to the world, but it's our communion, our common union. And it's worship, it's elot, as uh, mitmanon, Kahanat, as faithful priests, Amanyoch, as Kahanat, Kesoch, as priests, in the holiest, according to Hebrews 10, verses 19 and 20. Now, in the tabernacle, the Debtera, you understand, in the Dinquan, or uh, the Hebrew Mishkan, 
there were two compartments. There were two compartments, two lights. Now, you notice that there were two compartments. You see that there, there are two compartments, and there are two lights. You see there's there's two compartments in the in the in the tabernacle. Remember all of this right here, this is this is the sanctuary and this is the tabernacle. See, we have to understand that this is the tabernacle or the tent. This is the tent, tabernacle, this is the sanctuary, courtyard and grounds. All right. So there were two compartments and there were two lights. The holy place with the and here they have candlestick too. You know, that's a, a error. You understand? It should be lampstand. You understand? Or menorah. The place with the menorah. Exodus uh, 25 and 31. And there's a note coming. There's a note there. Go back to that or check that note out. The holiest or the holy of holies with the Shekinah. So the holy of holies is here. You see, the holy of holies is here. This is the holiest. This first compartment, holiest, holy of holies. You understand? The holy of holies has the Shekinah, or the Shekinah, the Shekinah, or the Sekinah, the Sekinah, would say the shock and awe. It has the, the kubra, the glory. You understand? The glory, or the manifest glory of Ha Elohim, the true God. These two places are now one. These two places in Christ are now one, and let's document that. Matthew um, 27, 27, verse 50 to 51. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 6 to 8. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 to 21. But it is important, it is important to see that there are still two lights. There are still two lights. Christos, Christ, Moshiach, the light of life, John 8 and 12, through the Spirit, through the Memphis, through the Ruach, giving light, giving illumination, giving light upon the holy things of Ha Elohim, the holy things of God, the holy things of Jah, Rastafari, the shoe bread, the altar of Aishans of incense, and also the sekena or the shekina. Now on the face of Jesus Christos, so that that shekina, that glory, is on the face of Jesus Christ. It's on the face of Joshua, Second Corinthians four and six. Into this. Twofold light, we as Mitmanon, faithful Kahanat priests, are brought. We're brought into that according to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. We, quote, walk in the light, end quote. So we walk in the light, not merely which he gives. We just don't walk in the light that he gives, but in which he lives. So we walk in the light that he gives, but it's not only in the light that he gives, but it's also in the in that which he lives. Because he lives in the light. First John one and seven. He is the true Illuminati, if you must you know, if you must know, the true Illuminati is Jesus Christos, is Jesus Christ, is our Lord and Savior. He is he is that true illuminated one. You always say, not Satan, Satan fell. He had a little light that was given to him, but he was not the light. You understand? But he had a little light, but he fell from that grace, and he fell from that light and became a Satan or a Shaitan, an adversary and a Diablos, a, a deceiver, a, a, a slanderer, a liar. But what of the command? What of the command? to, quote, bring pure oil, according to Exodus 27, verse 20, which is the opening verse of this, this uh, Shabbat, this Sendet, this, this week's um, Torah portion, reading, feeding, meditation. 
So what of it? Because our access, our access, our apprehension, the ability to apprehend it, you know, saying, to seize it, to hold it, to grab it in, in spirit and in, in, in truth, communion, our common union, our oneness, our unity, unity, and our transformation. Our transformation are by the manifest. Our transformation is by the Spirit. Ephesians, document this for you. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. Philippians um, chapter 2, verse 1. And uh, 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Now, our title, now we receive a title. You see what I'm saying? We receive a, a ma'arig a sim, a, a title to his presence. You understand? A, a title in that sense, but yeah, a title to his presence. It's all part of that access, but it, it is in the dem. It is in the blood. That's why original Rastafari tribe speak of Rastafari is, 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 a, is a blood and fire, a blood and fire tribe. And it's, it's very interesting that Rastafari, early Rastafari, would have said that, chanted that, maintained that, and made a record and documented that, that we can, we can reflect, you understand, on their tribe on the tribe of our predecessors, the former patriarchs and the former elders, some who are with us and some who are no longer with us in flesh. And we we find that word about Rastafari being a blood and fire. Remember, we're talking about the golden lampstand, the menorah, the mebrat, you know what I'm saying, which is of gold, and it's light. And, of course, it has to light with fire, but the key element is the pure the pure oil. So our title to his presence is is in the blood. Ephesians chapter 2. Really, his blood. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. The one, that's, that's the one blood, people. But only as filled. But, but we can only ap- apprehend this only when we are filled with the manifest. Only when we are filled with the spirit. With, as Rastafari used to say, the the positive vibration, you understand, know of the spirit and the truth of the King of Kings and His Christ, the spirit. Ephesians chapter five, verse eighteen. Do we really only then when we have the spirit now, the manifest? Do we really walk in the light? Do we really walk in the Burhan? In the Burhan na salam in the light and peace and not just peace like everything's quiet but the peace like everything is 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 shalom everything is whole you know everything is well it's holistic you understand it is holistic so there is still the matter of those rabbinical notes that we were sharing with you the interpretation and we thought this was interesting we still have some time to get into this let us continue. So remember, the, the, there was a whole controversy, you know, among some. Uh, well, if it says if it says pure olive oil beaten for the light, you understand? Why doesn't it say pure olive oil beaten for the meal offering? Because it doesn't. It's only pure olive oil beaten for the light. So now Mishnah, it, it, it taught the first part of the Tim Herod or the Talmud taught that there were three harvests of olives. There were three harvests of olives. You know, interesting about olives. I, I, I hope you, you know you know something about olives. Like there, there's the green olives, right? There's the there's the, the brown olives, like black the black olives. You know, there's the black olives. You know, it's it's interesting, like how they say that. Well, Jesus was olive skin. You know, they say he was olive skin. You know. And somehow, I guess, they're trying to imply that he wasn't black, but they are black olives. So next time they say, oh, uh, Jesus wasn't like an African or like he wasn't a black man because, um, you know, 
he he was an olive skin person. Just remind them that um, you know that olives, you know olives are also are also black. You know that's just an important point right there. But so we're learning something here that in our land, you know what I'm saying, and in our agri cultural um, way of life, that there are um, that there are three harvests. In other words, there in in in, in one you could say like season or in in a particular. Um, time period within that year, say within that cycle, there are three harvests. Now, why is why is the number of harvests um, important? We're searching for our um, our Yeshua, the Yeshua pick that perfectly expresses this this newness and this forward movement. Here it goes, right here in um, Rastafari. Let us get both the one um, with the cross, because you know, no cross, no crown, you know, and that was before some pseudo Illuminati tried to use it for their purposes. So you know, uh, meditate, you know, meditate on that, you know, get that mark of the beast, whitewashed, blonde hair, blue eye, out of your frontal lobe. So the Mishnah taught that there were three harvests of olives and each crop gave three kinds of oil for a total of nine types of oil. So you check this out. There are nine types of oil. So so there's those three, you understand? And those three each crop gave three kinds of oil. And in total there were nine types of oil, right? Um the first crop of olives were picked from the top of the tree. They were pounded and put into a basket. Now, a, a Rebbe Yehuda, he said, we would call him not a Rebbe in our time, we would say probably a, a Ras Yehuda. He said around the inside, that these were put around the inside of the basket to yield the first oil. The olives were then pressed beneath a beam, like a beam of wood. Um, a Rebbe Yehuda said, with stones, so there were some di differences, or there were different techniques among among some, to yield the second oil. The olives were then ground and pressed again to yield the third oil. Only the first oil was fit. Only that first oil that came out was fit for the holy um, mebrat, the menorah, while the second and the third were for the meal offering. So you see how the question was set up in the rabbinical interpretation on Exodus chapter 27. You know, why does it, you know, why not pure olive oil beaten for the meal offering? Now, as we learn, you understand, about the nature of the olive and the nature of the land and the type of yield, then we can understand that it was only the first oil that was fit for the menorah while the second and third were for meal offerings. Now the second crop is when the olives at roof level were picked from the tree. The olives that were at roof level. They were pounded and put into the basket, a Rebbe Yehuda said around the inside of the basket to yield the first oil, which was the second crop. Now the olives were then pressed with the beam, a Rebbe Yehuda said with stones, to yield the second oil of the second crop. Now the olives were then ground and pressed again to yield the third. You understand? So you can even see the, the latent trinity. You understand? Within, they said that, that which is perfect is in threes for the righteous. You understand? So the olives were then ground and pressed again to yield the third oil. Once again, with the second crop, only the first oil, that first yield, was fit for the mebrat, for the menorah, while the second and third were for meal offerings. Now, the third crop was when the last olives of the tree were packed into a vat until they become overripe. These olives were then taken up and dried on the roof and then pounded and put into the basket 
You know what Rabbi Yehuda says, right? We you know Ras Yehuda says, he said around the inside of the basket to yield the first oil. The olives were then pressed with the beam, Rabbi Yehuda said with stones, to yield the second oil. And then they were ground and pressed again to yield the third oil, once again, with the third crop. Only, only, only the first oil was fit for, you, you should know it now, the mebrat, the, 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 the menorah, the, the lamp stand, while the second and third were for the meal, for the meal offerings. Now, um, it, it, it's very important just to pay some attention to that when we consider now, you know, this, which is the most probable arrangement. You see how this arrangement is? You see how this is one branch here? Let's see if we can point it out. And you see how it's, it's not straight across as usually pictured, you know, where it's all flat like that. But actually where from a top-down view, you can see this um, kind of the angelic, you know, six-pointed, Star, the six point of star, the, the angels have six wings. You know, people talk about all this. You know, um, you know, Satan would try to lie and deceive and, and take these things and, and so that strip the righteous of everything. You understand? You know, like, oh, why you have it as gold? You know, so far and so on. You know, because doesn't want us to give glory to our Father so we can be, you know, want to demoralize us so that we can be under the curse or remain under the curse. So, this is a very interesting um, probable arrangement, and from what we have researched, it's very likely that this this was that type of arrangement, top-down view right there, and here is an artist's rendition of how that menorah, you understand, that um, lamp stand, not candlestick, was um, set up. So that was verse. 20, just to explain the opening, because the opening verse is the key. The opening verse right there was the key. So to go over it again, it says, And thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring the pure oil, olive beaten, for the light to cause the lamp to burn always. In the tabernacle of the congregation without the veil, which is before the testimony, Aaron and his sons shall order it from even to morning. Remember the, the day, the arrangement of the day. Evening and morning is one day. So remember what it says, outside the veil. So let's bring up this right here. Once again, outside the veil. You understand? Know outside the veil, in the tabernacle, but outside the veil. So outside the veil right there is the altar of Aishans or Itan, and here we get a top-down view right here, and here's the menorah, the lampstand, and here's the table of the shoe bread, you understand, the 12 loaves, one for each of the, um, the, uh, the uh, Israel or the Geda, uh, the Israel or the tribes of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel as above, so below. So Aaron and his sons shall order it from even to morning. So from even to morning they order it before Yahweh. It shall be a statute forever to their generations on the behalf. In other words, this is done on behalf now. So the priest serving this function on behalf of the children of Israel, which shows the very important role and function that um, that the, the the spiritual, what we say, the preacher, the pastor, the religious, the church, you know, has in the community, not just for themselves, but for in other words, they serve in the capacity that that protects the spiritual interests of the people, but. Yahweh's original, John's original will was that the whole nation be a nation of the priesthood. And we have to um, recall, you understand, we have to recall how did we get 
to this particular um, point right here. You understand? Know How do we get to, or, or what is about to actually, you know, what is about to actually come with the golden, you know, calf incident? You understand? Know That's what brings in really um, Leviticus. You know, so far, so far we 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 don't find like um, these uh, sacrifices for sin just yet, but we know it's a part of the law. We know that it comes in after the children of Israel had already violated, you know, the ten words that they had already freely said that they would do. So when we get to chapter 28 now, we learn about the priesthood um, and that the high priest and the priest. So we have the high priest, singular, and the priest, the associate priest, or the brotherhood priest, they are types of Christ. So the high priest is a type of Christ. So moving forward from the menorah, we now move to the high priest. Right? And the high priest, therefore, becomes a type of Christ. He is a type of Christ. And the priests are the mitmanon of the beta Christian are the faithful, the, the, the faithful and true witnesses of the house of the anointed ones or in common King James English, the believers of the church or the church age. And verse 1, And take thou to thee Aaron and thy brother and his sons with him from among the children of Israel, that he may minister to me in the priest's office, even Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu or Bihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar, Aaron's sons. And thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron, thy brother, for glory and beauty. For glory and beauty. And if I'm correct here, if you look this up in the Hebrew, you will find the Hebraic root of um, Tepharai, which is the Tiferet, which is getting a little bit Kabbalistic right there, but it is uh, Tiferet, which means beauty, you understand, which, which has a, an application that also means beauty. So we have another link, you understand, with Teferi, prophetically, even from the Hebrew, and on the Tree of Life, which they call um, Kabbalah, or they explain it under the title of Kabbalah. So this holy garment is for Aaron, thy brother, for glory and beauty. Verse 3, and thou shalt speak to all that are wise-hearted. Notice what it's saying. It says that you should speak to all those who are wise-hearted. Well, what about those who are not? Hmm. You're not speaking to them. You see what I'm saying? It says to speak to all those where we're at verse 3, read, And thou shalt speak to all that are wise-hearted, and I whom, whom, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom. So it's interesting. This is a way of even distinguishing who's who. Moses is being told by, Jah, by Jahweh, by Yahweh, that he should speak to all that are wise-hearted. And how would we know the wise hearted? These are they whom I or whom he has filled with the spirit of what? Wisdom. The spirit of wisdom. And we know it's knowledge first, wisdom, and overstanding, right? Or manifestation, or you could say demonstration. So knowledge is first. You understand? Um, but wisdom, the spirit of wisdom now is the key that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, to set him apart, to make him yetekedese, that he may minister to me in the priest's office, that he may minister to me in the priest's office. So what we have here are these eight elements, or these eight um, parts of the garment. But let's look at the fact that um, that the high priest, our high priest is Christos, but that the high priest, the 
Kahin HaGadol of ancient Israel was a type of Moshiach, was a type of Messiah, the high priest. Now Christ, Jesus Christos, is our high priest. Christos is a priest after the order of Melchizedek, but he executes his priestly office after the pattern of Aaron. So he is a priest. His order is actually after the order of Melchizedek. But he executes his office according to the pattern of Aaron. All right? Think about it for a moment. It's very important to understand how the, both of these, there's no conflict here, but you have to understand how they go together, but how they are distinguished, these, these, these two aspects, that he's a priest, the Moshiach, Christos, Jesus, Yeshua, after the order of Melchizedek or Melchizedek, but he executes the office, his priestly office, after the pattern of Aaron. Hebrews... Um, chapter 7 it gives the order when you want to see what the order is now when we speak about priesthood and we as Rastafari we speak about theocracy establishing theocracy let's not play around with this you know what I mean let's not call on the king of kings name and go before the world you understand and say we're representing the king of kings you understand and not be in his Christ and not be in his order Yobes, and that means that we will be bearing false, false witness. So, Christ is our high priest. He executes his office after the pattern of Aaron, but he is a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Now, Hebrews chapter 9, it gives us the pattern. Now, there's an interesting um, comparison in Genesis chapter uh, 14 verses 18 to 20 and a note in the Schofield. Make a note of it. Um, disciples and, 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 you know, deal with some of these notes that we find in the Schofield, you know. Not all at one time, but, you know, it's like food. You, you always have something to eat. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to starve. Now, the second fact was is to, to consecrate him when it speaks about consecration of him because the Hebrew is... Uh, Kodesh, you understand? Uh, we would say Kedus, Balmarinya and the Gudus. It means to set apart for God, to set apart for Jah, to set apart, right? Now, it's often translated as holy, as in verse 2. It's translated here as consecrate in verse 3. And it's often translated as sanctify. But now, um, if you want to see a summary, go to Zechariah, right, chapter 8, verse 3. There's a Schofield note that goes into some detail. But this word here is, is, is important because this is always the fundamental idea of holy. The basic idea is set apart. That's the fundamental idea of holy is to be set apart, consecrated, separated, sanctified person or a sanctified thing. Like if you have a particular chair in your house and you say, daddy sits in it, mommy sits in it, this is for special guests, you know, or that's the good china. It's like you consecrate that. You set it apart. You understand? But, but in this sense, we are set apart. These things are set apart for the true God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. Now, infinite confusion, i.e. Babylon, would have been spared the reader and the average nominal uh, Christian. You understand? If Kodesh, the Hebrew, Kedus, Bamarinya, had been uniformly translated, set apart. You see, so we, we, we talked about this before, but we'll focus on this again because sometimes in your mind you have to work this, you have to meditate it, you have to go over it. Repetition in good things is good. You understand, know, especially if you've been programmed the wrong way or been taught er erroneously and, and, and been made to believe that is true. A little more work is necessary to, to rewrite, you know, rewrite that, 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 that thought 
properly in your mind because people see these words holy, consecrated, separate, separated, sanctified, and they would think it's different ideas. They would give a different spin of meaning to each. Oh, well, when it says holy here, it's different than consecrate, but then when you look at the Hebrew, it's the same word. You see what I'm saying? Those ones are not really fit to be teachers but are needful of being taught. You understand? Even taught basically how to look up, you know, with the Schofield study, you know, reference or use a program like this. And um, hopefully this coming uh, week, give I and I at least seven days or so, we'll get this, um, we'll, we'll try to develop a page or something where we can have such things. It's probably already, you know, underway. But um, let's just go here right now and kind of show you this. You understand? Show you this right here. Okay, we're in chapter here we're at. So we can see from verse to verse how it changes, you know, how they change it up so 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 radically from one verse to the next. If you look at verse two, it's translated holy in King James. If you look at verse three, it's translated consecrate. If you look in other parts when you see sanctify, it's the same word Kardesh. Is, is basically one and the same word. But let's move forward. Now, the priesthood, um, the Kohenet, right? The Kohenet, you understand? Um, which is the priesthood distinct from the Kahenat, the priest. Um, this section now speaks when we go from verse 4. You understand? Uh, chapter 28, verse 4. We're speaking about the priest garment. So let's... Um, look at the priest garment. So we're clear on that connection with Christ being our high priest. You understand? And the King of Kings is our God Father. You understand? So um receive the Holy Spirit. You over so that one can not just walk in the light, you understand? But but he being the light is in us. So when we say he who is in us in I and I is stronger than he who's in it's greater than he who's in the world. You know then it will be a true profession of one's right faith. Verse four says, and these are the garments which they shall make. A breastplate. Let's get the pointer right here, all right? These are the garments that they shall make. First one is a breastplate. Right? The breastplate of what's called in the Hebrew the the Hushan. The Hushan, the breastplate, it says the breastplate of judgment, you understand, which has 12 precious stones. There are 12 precious stones, right? And we're going to touch on the significance, maybe not in this part, but in the following part, the significance of those 12 stones and also how that links with the astral theology, you understand, of what they call in the West the zodiac, but basically what we call the signs and seasons and days and years as they are witnessed in the stars. So we have an effort, all right? We see the effort. Do you see the effort right here? This is the effort. It's embroidered with blue, purple, scarlet, and gold. And the gold represents that heavenly glory, verse 6. And this is to atone. This is to atone for idolatry. That that garment there of the high priest, symbolically, when we get on that sort of a level of looking at the symbolism, you understand, what does the, what does the clothing represent spiritually and metaphysically? Now, he has a robe, right? He has, he has the robe. We see the robe down here. It's the, the robe of the effort. This is to atone for evil speech. We have Colossians. 3 and 8, and something that is known as uh, Tichelet, Tichelet, you understand, or Tichelet, some would say Tichelet, right? Um, then we have a broidered coat. There is the broidered, or like the embroidered, you know, the embroidered cloak, um, unless, I'm, unless I'm missing it. Let me look, let me look the the embroidered, you know, cloak, right? I um, think is, is is connected in with this right there. You understand? Because that's 
one could call that even the apron. Some some actually call that part um, the apron. And then we have a mitre. You know what I'm saying? And the mitre, we have to go back, you know, go back up to the top right here. This is the mitre. You know what I'm saying? Or the tim tim, almost like the bobo shanty. You know, have the the, the how they wrap. You know, them locks is the mitre. Really, the tur the turban is a fine linen. It's to atone for pride of his countenance. That's what that that is symbolic of. You, you know, the mitre, that crown, is to atone for the pride of of his countenance. Psalm ten and four. That's the the hilakal for that, or the word of power, hekal to say for that. Then he has a girdle. There is the girdle. You understand? You see the girdle right here. A sash. It's a type of of mitmanon or believer or faithful, a faithful and true witness, always ready, waiting, humility and character and willing to serve. Yeshua or Yeshua, he displays this, right? He he has displayed this character. John thirteen four to ten gives you a document and a reference, a reading and a feeding on that particular note. The washing of the Talmudim's feet or the deck of Mesamorit's feet, the students' feet. And in Revelation chapter one, verse thirteen, we see him in golden girdle and that atones for the sinful for the sinful heart where he has the golden the golden girdle atoning for the sinful in other words the sinful um heart. Now um let's go forward so we have and a girdle and they shall make holy garments for Aaron for Aaron thy brother and his sons, that he may minister to me in the priest's office. In other words, if you don't have these garments, you cannot minister for me, because it's a very serious role and responsibility that the priests serve to say in in um in Christ and in in, in, in the revelation of Rastafari, this is is also applicable to those who are the, the, the leading, as we say, brethren, you understand, as well as the fellow brothers, you understand. So we have that role of the high priest symbolically, you understand, or we may have the preacher, you understand, and the, or the pastor on those sort of levels, so forth and so on. Now, the materials are outlined in verse 5, and they shall take gold and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen, and fine linen, make make a, you know, um, make a mark right there for fine linen. You understand? It's a necessity. You understand the effort, the a food, and they shall make the a food of gold and of blue and of purple and of scarlet and of fine twined linen with the cunning work, or to say embroidery. It shall have the two shoulder pieces. They're of joint at the two edges, the two shoulder pieces. So we have the two the two shoulder pieces, and we have also this joining there with the, the lace of blue, maybe above the the curious girdle of the aphid, and that the breastplate may not be loosed. The breastplate may not be loose, how how that is Connected right there, the breast. There's a word, and there's a teaching on that. Why it begins off of a question like, why does it say like not to be loosed? What does it mean? You know what I mean? With one's reason on that, and come to the the um, the the spirit of wisdom, and become become wise-hearted to meditate on these things, and to and to and to to reason on these things. It shall have the two shoulder pieces there of joined at the two edges, and it shall be joined together. And the curious girdle of the aphut, which is upon it, 
shall be of the same, according to the work thereof, even of gold, of blue, of purple, and scarlet, and fine twine linen. Verse 9, and thou shalt have two onyx, two onyx, two onyx stones, right? And grave on them the names of the children of Israel. Now you see right here at the shoulder part, right here, there's the two onyx stones. You understand? Has grave six names of the tribe of the children of Israel, six, six names each. So the 12 tribes, six and six, you understand, on both shoulders of the priest. Six of, verse 10, six of their names on one stone, and on the other six names of the rest on the other stone, according to their birth. In other words, according to their birth order. With the work of an engraver in stone, like the engravings of a signet, shall thou engrave the two stones with the names of the children of Israel. Thou shalt make them to be set in, and it says, oaches, oaches of gold, oaches of gold, I guess settings, settings of gold. Verse 12, and thou shalt put the two stones upon the shoulders of the aphud for stones of memorial, metasebia. So these are memorial stones, for stones of memorial to the children of Israel on their on their behalf. And Aaron shall bear their names. He shall bear their names before Yahweh upon his two shoulders for a metasebia, for a remembrance or a memorial. Verse 13, or for in Hebrew, like Zakar, the first man's name was Zakar as well, before Adam. But verse 13 says, And thou shalt make ouches, or ouches, of gold. Verse 14, And two chains of pure gold at the ends of wreathen, like a wreath, a wreathen work shalt thou make them, and fasten the wreathen chains to the oaches. So you can see some of that work from a distance right up there. You understand? As it's uh as it's attached. Alright. So now we're gonna get into the the the, the breastplate or the chos, the hoshen the hoshen we'll get into the breastplate um in the next part of this but right here we have it's hidden in the breastplate of judgment. It contains the Urim and Thummim, the Urim and Thummim, to determine Yahweh's will. And we have the breastplate of judgment, the Hoshen, which 12, with, with 12 precious stones. And um, before we conclude this part, let's see if we can show you um, one, here it goes right here, one rendition of these, um, these uh, beautiful stones, the colors, all the significance. There's much significance going